Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome to the official Mercedes-Benz YouTube channel where today we're going to take a look at a completely top secret and exclusive location. Something that has never been seen before here at the storage halls of Mercedes-Benz Classic. We're talking the likes of championship winning Formula One and DTM cars, road cars, concept cars, some that never even made it into production. So let's head in and take a look. Oh, and by the way, you're watching in VR 180 to have even more of an experience. So let's then take a look inside at some of these cars from the Mercedes-Benz history, where we are joined by Michael from Mercedes-Benz Classic. How are you? Hi, I'm Michael, and uh, welcome to my crib. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. It is great to be here. Just look at this. Insane, my mind is blown away already at what we're looking at. I mean, talk us through this. I mean, I'm just kidding. I mean, I wish it was my crib, but it obviously <laughs> isn't. It's like one of the 11 storage halls the Mercedes-Benz collection has, where we okay. store like our 1,100 cars we own in total. Okay. And I just thought like, nobody has been here before, so I just thought I used the opportunity to show you around, I guess. Well, I think I speak for everyone when I say that this is a an incredible thing to be able to see. Literally Formula One cars, road cars, vision cars, concept cars. Where do we Everything. begin? <laughs> Where do we begin? Now, that's a good question. I think we begin with the fastest car, obviously. Yeah, right in front of us, right here. So, tell me, I mean, Formula One, of course, number 44, Lewis Hamilton. What are we looking at? We are looking at, like, the real deal. That's the car, like, Lewis Hamilton won his, uh, I think, third championship in total, second mm -hmm. for Mercedes-Benz. Okay. Uh, he won with that car in 2015. Um, I think in that year we won like 16 out of the 19 races. So Absolute we kind domination. Of domination yeah. <laughs> that year. And uh, as I said, like that's the real deal. Like no fake, no replica. That's his car as he drove it. So this is the exact car that I will have been watching race in 2015 exactly. right here. Exactly. I mean, that is priceless. I would love to let you sit in it, but obviously it's like his seat. So uh, it was made for his body, so he obviously won't fit. But uh, that's the only reason. Um, apart from that, obviously we fitted some plexiglass cover so that nobody else has to try because as we said before, this is like his car, so it's like not replaceable. Yeah, the real deal. It needs to be looked after and kept forever. Talk us through this line of cars then. I can see lots of different concepts, but we start back in the 70s or 80s, and this car literally has rubber on it. It has, like coming from Formula One, that's a different kind of safety car. That was one of our experimental safety vehicles mm -hmm. we did back in the day. It started in the 60s or 70s, where we tried some innovative safety concepts. Like all of those cars are based on the S-classes because they were the most secure car of that time. Yeah, and then yeah. we tried new stuff, like you pointed out the rubber bumpers, or look at the big seats, yeah. stuff like that, that went into serious production okay. years later. Those are kind of different kind of studies. Those are design concepts. Like this mm -hmm. is the design study of the A-Class. This is the design study of the, I think, 2003 Mercedes-Benz CLS. So that's also okay. the real deal. Yeah, so that's the Vision CLS that was presented to the world. That is the Vision the CLS that was presented to the world, yeah. And of course, now we've just recently had the launch of the third generation of the CLS. We had, and that's where it all started. Okay. And, but I think, most unique is to take a look of the studies that didn't make it into the series yeah. production. Like for example, this F500 Mind is it called? It's also from 2003 and looks very spacious inside. I think you shall have I mean, seen this I is completely futuristic. I don't it think is. I've ever seen it. The thing with this is that it's still futuristic even now. It is, because even in 2019 we don't have squared up steering wheels, but in 2003, where this car was introduced, we thought it was the future. And that's a steering wheel that can actually move. I can see that it can slide from the center off to the edge. It can, and this car has even more interesting features. For example, look at the passenger seat. So, can I open this? I think so. So, right beside us, we have a laptop with a holographic projection. You have, so you can, if you were James Bond, you could show your evil plans to like <laughs> the passenger seat. Um, but for example, there are some real like features that we introduced with this car. We introduced the night vision system in 2003 mm -hmm. and that's available in the S-Class now. So moving on from the future to some studies that actually went into serious production. Those are the two design studies from the Mercedes-Benz R-Class, which was called the Grand Sports Tour. 
Those are the two design studies from the B-Class, which was called the Compact Sports Tourer back then. But moving on to some of my personal highlights, those are the two design studies from the Mercedes-Benz SLK, which, like the design study, debuted in 1994. So that came out when I was seven years old, and it was one of my favorite cars back then. <laughs> now you have the chance yeah. to meet your icons. And what I found funny is like, that we first introduced the study without a roof, kind of as a roadster. And then later that year, we introduced the study with the famous folding metal roof, which kind of gives you two cars, one a roadster and one a closed car for the winter times. Back to some racing with like three race cars that are based on like road production cars, but I think you know your fair amount to each one of them. This is right in my element. Three cars that were originally introduced as road cars, but these being their racing siblings, and this in particular, based on the Mercedes-Benz SLR McLaren, but of course the 722 GT, the racetrack version, the customer racing program for the SLR trophy. Can we take a look inside? Usually not, but things you are in here already, I guess. <laughs> Let's, Let's give it a pop try. It open. Let's pop it open. So much drama, and then inside, so much carbon fiber, but that cannot be the easiest thing to try and climb into. Oh, squeezing through. Yeah, that's not so easy. But it is cool when you're inside here. So is this literally ready to be taken out? Can we go and drive it? It is like in, uh, in working condition, but for like insurance reasons, all the flammable fluids like the oil and the fuel has to be taken out before storage and mm -hmm. it's replaced by a wax-based product, so stuff doesn't rust. So technically, this car could be driven, it just needs to enter a workshop first, gets refilled with all the important stuff, and then you can go out and race it. Wow, do you imagine what this would be like? Oh, okay, well so, we move on. on. <laughs> Shall we move on? Moving on. To this. One of my favorites, based, of course, on the Mercedes-Benz SLS AMG, the road car being, well, the first AMG project. But this, this looks a bit different. It looks a bit dirty, to be fair. Yeah. Uh, this one won the 2012 race in Dubai, and the special thing is we kept it looking like that. So all the dirt is real, all the dirt is from the desert. Yeah. It has a sign in the windscreen that says, like, please don't. <laughs> clean the car, like the person who cleans this car gets in some big trouble, but because we wanted to preserve as much of its racing history yeah. as possible. And I know back in 2012, the SLS AMG GT3 car was winning all the races, the Nürburgring 24, the Dubai 24, the Sebring 24, lots of the 12 hour races. Yeah, it was quite a successful season. And uh, yeah, I guess we move on from that straight yeah, to the to car. Some, to a much cleaner example. <laughs> Definitely, <laughs> the C-Class DTM car. Ben Schneider's last championship winning car, 2006. Yeah. And also, like we mentioned, the Formula One car in the first, uh, as we've saw and seen first, like the real deal. So that was his car. That's not a replica. That's like the last car of uh, Bernd Schneider. There are some very significant cars here from the motorsport past. There are. I'm glad you like it. But wait, there is more. Actually, we have another haul mm -hmm. to show you. But let's just not walk past this amazing car right here, but I think you know it quite well, do you? Again, the Mercedes-Benz SLR McLaren, but this is the Sterling Moss. There were only 75 of these. I think it's such an iconic tribute to Sir Sterling Moss, and I was lucky enough to join Mercedes-Benz Classic for the Mille Miglia, oh, to drive, <laughs> retrace his footsteps, driving in a legendary 300 SL. But this is a tribute. I think it's such a unique style, this open canopy, and imagine, imagine sitting in the driving position here with that long bonnet out in front, tiny little windshield. You've got the side exit, thunderous exhaust from the V8 as well. This is such a special car. And I think not many people have actually seen the interior, so you can have actually a look at it because only 57, 75, right? 75 were built, I got that right. Um, but as I said, 75 of those, but we have one car in here that was only built once. Yeah, so 75 of these and one. One of this amazing one of those. cars. I think nobody knows about that one. It's like uh, based on a 190E, at, but we shortened it. It was a shortened concept car. Uh, so it's, I think, two thirds of the length of a 190E. And okay. the story behind it, um, we wanted to go rallying with it, you know, when the Group B was famous back then. So that was either like the kind of, you know, build a shorter concept car for mm -hmm. the city, but also an afterthought was, man, then we have a light car to go rallying with it. Obviously, that never happened, but literally none of those people outside there know about this car. Well, nope, I've definitely never seen that before coming here. And then immediately alongside it is a, a full camouflaged prototype. It is, like, this is uh, like, you know, the test mule for the mm -hmm. Technics 
for engine and stuff and that's why it's like fully camouflaged and even like those one-offs like we keep in the collection like you see that it was a test mule by looking at the yeah. highly professional led lights but uh, that's that's how you test stuff we haven't yet mentioned that right here is one of my favorite cars in the world the sls amg black series that's a good car. It's like one of my favorite cars as well. I just love the color combination of the yellow and how it contrasts to all the black carbon bits. And it is a stunning car, which is also still wearing number plates. It has. It's one of the few cars in here that still has number plates and haven't been prepped for storage yet. So it still has all the flutes. But I think we shall leave it here because I have some more, more impressive stuff to show you. Even, Even more. <laughs> What you're looking at in this hall is a part of our 125 years motorsport heritage which we are celebrating this year. Like it's basically full of the best DTM cars of the last 30 years we've been into this series. This hall is an absolute dream. From where it began? I think yeah, that's where it began. 1988 we entered the DTM back in again with the car from Roland Asch. And I can also spot, we've got the 2005 Paffett winning car. We got that. We've got the 2010 Duresta winning car. We got that also. Like, as I said, <laughs> plenty of cool stuff <laughs> in here. And even the 2018 cars all the way back over there. Plus all the Formula One cars as well. Yeah. So I tell you what, all of this is giving me an itch to go out and drive. Can we take something out? If you promise me you will turn it in one piece, looking as good as I left it to you, then I think I can make that I happen. Think, I think I can promise that. Sounds good to me. Let's do it. Let's do it. For now though, well, this car, the drama, even just opening the doors. Let's get it started up and head on out.